can assist you or tutor you more. If you have more questions, just email me. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really interesting one. It gets a little more complicated because it requires you to use the moments of, I mean, using the uh, method of joint as well as the uh, method of sections. So here we go. Uh, we're doing six, uh, I mean, 37, question 37. Determine the force in member EF, BE, BC, and BF of the truss and sa state it's if their members are in tension or compression. So P1 equals um, P2 and P3 equal to a certain amount of forces. Right, so we're looking for what is EF, what is BE, what is BC, and what is BF, and whether if they're in tension or compression. So to get started, um, we the first step one of trusses, especially if you're using sections, uh, step one is find the global equilibrium. Right, so I already drew up the forces over here, uh, the reaction force at A and reaction force at D, right? Since this is the ball section, so therefore there's only a normal force, and this is the connection point over here. This is uh, has two forces. So find the global equilibrium. Uh, we did that so many times in chapter 5, so let's just set um, some of the forces in the x direction to the right is positive, right? Uh, equals to zero. Therefore, uh, AX uh, must uh, equal uh, to P3, right? So um, AX is um, six kilonewtons. And we look over here, right? P3 is going to this direction. And there's no any other force that counters P3. So AX should really be going into this direction to the left. And uh, now we found AX. Now uh, let's find, uh, use the uh, some of the moments because we can't use some of the um, some of the um, y direction because there are two unknowns, right? We can only write out one equation. Uh, therefore, let's say counterclockwise is a positive. Some of the moments uh, we can do A or D. It doesn't really matter. Let's just do uh, A. Um, so uh, some of the force equals to zero. Therefore, going counterclockwise is the positive direction. Then P3, uh, P1 times 3 plus P2 times a 6 and plus P3 uh, times 3. All of these are going into the negative direction, right? So all of this, we can set it to one side of the equation equals dy uh, times nine meters right and in the end dy if you plug everything into your calculator uh, dy should give you uh, 13 kilonewtons right and now we can use uh, some of the forces in the y direction going upwards is positive to find um, to find uh, what a y is so a y is going up right minus P1, which is 9 kilonewtons, minus P2, which is 12 kilonewtons, and plus uh, 13 kilonewtons at dy. So normal reaction force at dy and ay in the end should give you 0 plus 1, 10, right? Um, should give you 8 kilonewtons for ay. All right, so now we have found the global equilibrium, uh, which we found all of the forces, the external force. And now let's use the method of section. Right, so we're looking for EF. So this one over here, this one over here, BE and BC and BF. Right, so let's cut the... Um, let's cut the... This truss... Um, the three um, forces that we're trying to find. Uh, uh, don't ever cut more than three because in 2Ds we can only find two, um, uh, three equations, right? Moment at a point, uh, x, y, and I mean force in x and force in y. So don't cut more than three um, numbers. Usually, yeah, that's how we do it. And um, always pick the one that's easier, uh, the easier side. So um, 
to me, right side looks easier because there's less forces, right? Here's two, and this side has like four over here, um, external ones. So let's just use uh, the one over here, right? So we're going to draw another free body diagram of the section uh, like that. And there will be a force over here, and there will be a force over here. And that's all we need, all right? D, C, and uh, E. I'll just write F over here and um, B over here for you know easier reference, right? Go in here, go in here, and go in here. So now let's use the um, let's see. So we had to solve for a problem. Uh, let's use the moments at E, right? Because it get rid of these two forces and it get rid of one this force so you only need uh, one unknown this find you the BC now a lot of people would ask you, you know Jack why don't we use force over here right the internal force or this force over here well that is because in a truss all of this internal in a truss uh, in a, when it's in its uh, equilibrium position or right, station condition whatever you call it um, all its internal forces is zero Right, all of the internal for forces should not exist, right? All of because and it will all simples out to the uh, forces going out, right? So if we count the entire system of the entire ground, we don't even need to count the normal uh, force and the d force, right? For, you know, for question uh, going back to unit three, we didn't have to find what reaction force are, right? So all of the forces should just be P3, P1, and P2, right? These forces are the sum of all of the forces that came out of this entire truss. So that's why we never have to uh, care about the force at ED and CD when we are using this part, of, when we, we, we cut it, right? Um, because that is also a question I had during an exam. That was a bad time to ask that question. Um, obviously, I failed my... Well, I didn't fail it, but I'm really messed up on that equation, couldn't solve half of the question because I, you know, just wasn't able to do section, right? Because I had like one, uh, one force over here, one force over here, one force, one force, that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I was like, that's way too many forces, I cannot do this question. So anyway, um, that's why we don't need, need force over here, force over here, or force over here. Um, so yeah, let's find some of the moments at E. Right, let's just say going uh, counterclockwise is the positive direction, and therefore, some of so BC uh, is going this way, so it's going in clockwise, right? So this is a negative over here uh, times the three meters, and um, D over here times DY uh, times three, sorry, plus plus dy times over 3, and this is going to the positive direction, right, it's counterclockwise. Um, move bc to the other side of the equation, divide, both sides divided by 3, well apparently bc uh, is equal to dy, and um, bc is also equal to 13 kilonewtons, right? So let's write over here, uh, bc is in kilonewtons. So uh, to determine whether this is um, a tension or a reaction, this is the right, so this is the direction that we're going to and it's right, right? So we know this direction is, is right. There are two ways uh, to define uh, to define whether this is intention or reaction, right? Uh, Jeff Hansen, I will quote what he said in his lecture video, Dr. Jeff Hansen, uh, he's a professor from Texas Tech. He said, um, this is the power, uh, you know, free body diagram of a joint. So if, you know, if I, the member, right, the beam, is being stretched, my reaction is pull on the joint. So you see, this is pulling on the joint, not pushing on the joint. So, right, if it's pushing on the joint, that is because it's being compressed, right? This is pulling on the joint, uh, it's going this way because it's being stretched, right? Does that make sense? And also, uh, here's another way that the book uses is... Um, you know, uh, internal force. So if it's on a beam, right, if force is being applied to the beam like that, that's compressing, right? I mean, this is really common sense. If you have something and you put your two hands be 
between it and you're trying to put force onto the object, well, that's pushing the object, right? But look, if we look internally, right? If we look internally, let's just say we cut it over here, right? Internally, this is going this way. So this force must be going this way, right? So this force must be going this way as to counter this force going this way. Does that make sense? Because this force is pushing onto the thing, right? That's why it's being compressed, right? We're looking at the perspective of internal force. Now, we're not looking at the external, right? We're looking at what's going on inside of the beam. Now, the, the inside of the beam is compressing. Why? Because it's being stretched on external scale. Does that make sense? Uh, I will, yeah. So I'll make a separate video on how to do this. Um, on how to determine if it's uh, tension or compression. Um, so we find what BC is, um, which is really nice. Um, now we can use, uh, let's see, what can we do here? Now we can use uh, the moments, can use moment. We can use a moment in the y direction, to be honest. Um, yeah, so some of the moments uh, in the some of the moments in the y direction going upwards is positive, uh, right? This equal to zero, all of it. So, yeah. So we have one force dy is going upwards. So uh, dy, all of this equal to zero. Dy, excuse me, uh, minus. So p two, right? P two is twelve kilonewton. And one force is going downwards like that, right? Which is EB. EB part of it has um, some force going downwards. So minus uh, BE times, well, this is um, 3, 3. Uh, this is uh, square. So the uh, you know angle over here should be 45 degrees. And um, so times the sine of 45, and uh, that should be square root of 2 over 2, right? So 13 minus 12 equals 1. Uh, move this to the other side. So BE uh, times sine of 45 angle uh, gives you 1. So uh, BE should give you a square root of 2 over 2 or equals uh, just square root of 2. Right, if you times square root of 2 over 2, a uh, square root of 2 over square root of 2, which is equal to times 1, simplifies to square root. Square root of two. Um, am I correct? Yes, that's right. Um, so BE is equal to square root of two, which is one point four one, I believe. Uh, BE over here. What the heck? I didn't write anything here. One point four one kilonewtons, and uh, the rec uh, direction is correct, right? Because it's, it's being stretched. That's why it's pulling. Right, it's being stretched exter externally. That's why it's pushing, you know, trying to not being pulled separate apart by going compressing internally. Okay, so this is tension, and as we said earlier, uh, BC is thirteen kilonewtons. I don't know why I didn't do anything here. So thirteen uh, kilonewtons, and this is also in tensions. And uh, let's look at, so now we have this, uh, we have enough forces to solve the last force in this side of the page. So find um, force Fe, right, using the sum of the forces in the F uh, direction, in the X direction, equal to zero, right? So um, let's just say BC, uh, negative BC, uh, so all these forces are going to this direction. We know these two are right, so this is must be going into this direction, right? Because the there has to be some forces counteract this force and this force. Does that make sense? Right. So BC minus BC minus um, one because you know, as we said over here, right? BC uh, where did so BE times sine of forty five or BE times cosine of forty five equals one, so minus one. And um, well, or you can use square root of two, which is BE times cosine of 45, and you plug that into your calculator, it gives you one, if you don't trust me. Um, so 
and all of that plus this force Fe, right? That to total give us zero. Move these two to the right side. So Fe should give you 13 uh, kil uh, sorry, 14 kilonewtons. Uh, 14 kilonewtons, right? Because Fe, Fe, we calculate over here. I mean, sorry, BC is 13 plus 1A equals 14. So Fe is uh, 14 over here, 14 kilonewtons. And um, it's so it's so it should be going to this direction. Let me get rid of that valley. Uh, get rid of that thing over there. Uh oh. Well, let's just redraw this, right? This is going this way. This is going this way, right? We proof that has this has to be going to the right because these other two x forces are going to the left. So this is being this pushing on the joint because it's being compressed. Right, EF should be uh, compressing. Right, because it's going, it's being compressed. Right, that's why internal force is going to the joint, uh, like over here. And now we uh, found all of these forces, and let's look at the left side of the equation. Right, so let's we we can do it over here. Um, so one force. Uh, well, we're finding FB. Right, we're finding for FB, and if we just use F jointed F, we can't find what BF is, right? and that's what we're trying to find. So instead, we should use a joint B, right? We should use joint B. So over here, over here, and over here, and here's a force going down by P1. So we're looking for what this force is, and we already have this force going upwards right and we don't really need these two forces because we're only finding the force in the uh, y direction right some some of the y f and y and this t in this uh, little system over here in uh, joint b some that equals zero going upwards is a positive uh well this is bf so we assume bf is going upwards right and um, plus uh, uh, one right into the y direction because 1.44 the 1.41 the magnitude of uh, BE going and times the cosine of that right oh and yeah cosine of that and um, that minus which is uh, 9 kilonewtons right it says over here I said yeah 9 p.m. and 9, 9 km uh, gives you zero, right? Some of the forces. So move 9 to the other side of the equation minus 1. So BF should be uh, 8 kilonewtons. And we look at the graph, it's going upwards, right? It's going internally because it's stretching on the joint, because pulling on the joint, because it's. Um, it's in con it's in tension, right? It's being stretched. That's why my the reaction of the member is the pulling in, um, and that is why we say that BF. I don't know why I wrote a five over here. BF um, should be eight kilonewtons as in tension. And here we go. That's the uh, entire videos. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. Uh, good luck on your studies. Hopefully I'll see my future videos. Bye. If you have more questions, uh, specific questions you would like me to do, please comment in the comment section down below.